trains, trucks, cars, they all function in a similar way. Their goal is to get from point A to point B, and in order to do that, you need to give them some form of energy. It can be gas or direct electricity. But either way, you're not going to be able to charge them once and never repeat the process again. At least that's what I thought up until recently. But actually, I was wrong. There is a way to abuse physics in order to get a train or a truck that will never need to recharge. And by the end of this video, it will all make perfect sense. This is FMG, an Australian mining company. Their job is basically to take the iron from the ground, put it on a train, move it, and sell it. Every part of that process costs money and is harmful to the environment. And at one point, someone had a very good idea. What if that middle part, the train, didn't contribute to climate change? That would give us good PR. And even better, right now we spend a lot of money to fuel that train. That is money we could save if the train could simply fuel itself. When I first saw a news article about this, I thought it was clickbait. It sounded impossible. But I'm going to show you now how in this specific situation, they actually managed to do it. See, when this train breaks, it produces electricity that it can store in its battery. This is a system called regenerative braking. And I'll explain it to you. See, there are two ways vehicles slow down. The old way is quite simple. Two disc pads press against the wheel. It's effective at slowing down, but the energy is transformed into heat. And this is wasted energy, unless your plan was to provide heating to street cats and dogs, which would actually be quite nice of you. The second way is through regenerative braking. This is used in electric cars, trains, trucks, and even bicycles. When slowing down, instead of converting the kinetic energy into heat, it is used to recharge the battery. So imagine you're in an electric car. You use the electricity from your battery to speed up, and then when you start to slow down, you get some of that electricity back thanks to regenerative braking. It's basically like recycling electricity. But like with recycling, you can never get back as much as you put in, since there is a loss of energy in every step of the process. So how come I'm talking about a train that goes on forever? Well, two things make it different. First, a part of its journey is downhill. And during that part of the trip, the train captures some of that energy and puts it in its battery. But at that point, it's not moving thanks to its own power, it's moving thanks to gravity. So yeah, this train actually runs on gravity, which is pretty cool. But that would not be enough. It still needs to climb back up. And we know that some of the energy is needed for other parts of the trip, and some of it is simply lost in the entire process. And here is the second thing that makes it different. This train is loaded with iron ore that it takes from the mines downhill to its destination. There it unloads the ore and it comes back uphill. But it comes back empty, meaning that it's far lighter. This means that it takes far less energy for the train to go back up so in this situation, it's possible to capture enough energy on the way down for it to last the entire trip. And that's how this train is completely self-sufficient. So it never needs to recharge. And there is also a giant truck that works on the same concept. Loads up at the top of the mountain, goes back down, charges during that time, unloads and comes back up no fuel is needed. It's called the E-dumper. Oh, and the train, it's called the infinity train. As you can see, they had a different approach to naming. I personally prefer the simpler, funner names like E-dumper. So why did I talk about the train and not the truck? Well, honestly, I really like trains. 
So you might be wondering, could we use this in other places in order to fight climate change? Well, sadly, not really. Because of the requirements, one location must be significantly uphill from the other location and a part of the trip must be done without cargo. So most places where we use trains and trucks don't fit this criteria. But still, it could help out in the mining and a few other industries. So it's definitely a useful technology. I hope you enjoyed learning something new. And if you want to support a small channel, you can subscribe and maybe press this button. That will allow you to see my future videos. It would be a big help and I would really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe you would be interested in learning more about the pros and cons of electric cars or maybe about Australia. How about that time when the country behaved like an evil colonial empire towards its much poorer and smaller neighbor? And it happened a few years ago and not many people know about it, but you can.